does not make you a Christian. Soaking you in water in baptism does not make you a Christian. I, I, is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Because we need to redefine the condition for true salvation. A prophet of God speaking a word over you to say your sins are forgiven does not take you to heaven. Hello? I want all of us to get to heaven. So I want us to probe so that if you belong to this category and your conviction about your being saved is because of some of these things I'm saying. Let's clean up the air so that you will know. There is what we call, they used to teach us in Sunday school called assurance of salvation. Did they teach you? Not salvation. Assurance of salvation. That you can know that if the trumpet sounds today, by the way, there is a real trumpet and it will sound. Let's be careful as we progress spiritually and we seek to edit some of these things out. I hear men of God who speak and say there's nothing like the book of life. You know that statement? Write my name in the book of life. Yeah, forget it. There's nothing like that. <laughs> we will know one day but I can tell you there is a book of life. The Bible says books were opened and another book, a master book was opened and the name of that book, it didn't leave us to any theological guessing. It said the name of that book is the book of life and whosoever's name, pastor, apostle, koinonia member, prayer band member, revivalist, whosoever's name was not found in that book. The Bible tells you that you are cast into the lake of fire. It's as simple as that. What's that man's song? Is your name in the book of life? Serious question. Is your name? Sing it. Is my name? See, let me tell you, you know, there are many believers who think that your confidence is equal to salvation. I won't go to hell. I'm going to heaven. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you are not saved, brothers and sisters, hear me. There is a name for you. The Bible calls you what? The natural man. This is not my message. I'm just digressing to press it in. So that you will know and you will care. Brothers and sisters, I know that we have been taught not to scare people with the revelation of judgment. That there is judgment day. Don't scare people. So that their coming to Christ will not be out of fear. But the only issue is that it is true. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Heaven and earth will pass away. But not one word, not one word will fail. I really want us to truly, truly, before we even progress, examine our salvation. The Bible says to examine ourselves so that you are sure that if Jesus comes today, he will make heaven. If you know right now that if the trumpet sounds, you are going to heaven, Stand up. If you are not sure, no problem. I'm serious. We are not playing games in this place. Please, you know that we are very serious. If you are sure that if the trumpet sounds right now, right now as we speak, you are going, you know we can fake it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That if the trumpet sounds now, right now, together, we are going to be with Jesus Christ in the air. That is one of the greatest assurance. You are sure you are going to graduate, but that is inferior to your eternal destiny. You are sure you are going to get married. You are sure you are going to be healed. You are sure you are going to be delivered. But brothers, you are even sure you will be successful. 
But can I be sincere with you? If you are not sure of your salvation, it's time to deal with it. And I'm going to talk to you. I will tell you what the condition to make heaven is. Please and please, I owe you that responsibility under God. Thank you for giving to the Lord. Keep standing. I am alive that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so in the course of ministering I have had the privilege to stand before people few minutes before they die I have had the privilege to comfort families that have been bereaved some families of members here some families around that I'm connected to hallelujah I've had the opportunity to hold the phone and hear families cry as their loved ones pass on. I've had the opportunity to look at people for the last time. I've had advanced knowledge where God told me this person is not going to make it. He's going to die. The Bible says if our hope is only in this life, we are of all men most miserable. If you've never thought about this thing this year, I want you to think about it for one minute. Jesus Christ is truly coming back. Please, in case you have been told that it will not happen, let me guarantee you there is an event that is going to happen in this earth. And every prophecy, every single prophecy, that needs to be to come to pass for the coming of Jesus Christ has been fulfilled. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please take it seriously. Every prophecy. There are people who have had visions of the coming of Christ. There are people who have had visions. I'm just reminding you that there is more to this life, this physical life that you see. And as you walk up and down your daily activity, if you are not sure that if Jesus Christ comes, we will be caught up. Let me tell you how it will happen. Please sit down. Everybody open your Bible. First Thessalonians, please. Paul had a revelation of what is going to happen and I'm going to show you. 1 Thessalonians 4. We are talking about the natural man. As far as I'm concerned, this is the most important thing. The natural man should know. First Thessalonians 4 from verse 13. 4 verse 13. Please let's hurry up so that we can beat time. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for salvation. Everyone look up. It's projected. Paul is talking to the church in Thessalonica. He said, but I would not have you to be ignorant. That means part of the revelations of the kingdom Paul wants us to have is the knowledge about how the coming of Christ is going to be. Brethren, so he's speaking to believers, concerning them which are asleep, that's those who have died. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so also, which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So Paul is not speaking his opinion. He's speaking by the word of the Lord. That which we are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. That means the day that Jesus Christ is going to come, there will still be people who will be alive in the earth. Are you getting me? Not everyone is going to have died as in gone to the grave. So he's giving us 
Paul is painting a picture on how the rapture will be. Verse, verse 16. For the Lord himself. For who? The owner of the earth. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. Now, which of the archangels we are not told exactly. But the Bible tells us Paul was speaking that on that day Jesus himself will descend from the heaven of heavens and will come upon this very physical earth. And it says there will be a shout, the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. That means a trumpet is going to sound. A shofar will blow. And the first thing that will happen in that great ceremony is that the dead in everybody say dead in one more time so it's not only those who are alive in Christ a man can also be dead in Christ that he served God with his whole life and he believed and accepted the lordship of Jesus Christ I bring you a message of hope for those of you who have lost loved ones, brothers and sisters, if they gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a name for them. The Bible says they are dead but in Christ. That means a day will come there will be a glorious reunion. Hallelujah. So the dead in Christ will be the first to rise. 17. Then, we which are alive and remain shall do what? We shall be caught up with them in the clouds. Let me explain to you what will happen. All of this that you see will happen in split seconds. Hallelujah. Split seconds of earth's time. It will be faster than the speed of light. There will be that sound. There's no time I would have shown you that unbelievers are not going to hear that sound. Because he, Jesus gave us a revelation. He said, my sheep hear my voice. That means if you didn't hear it, it was not for you. It's as simple as that. Is that in your Bible? <laughs> the Bible says two people will be lying down. Two roommates in Ribadu will be lying down. And one will be taken and leave the stubborn roommate who is not paying attention to the things of God and thinks I don't care. You get up and say, uh -uh. where did my roommate go to? We have checked out of this earth. A day is coming. The greatest catastrophe that has happened to the earth it's not all of the tsunami and the disappearance. Imagine how many pilots are going to go. You think they will stay? Once you hear that sound, you are leaving. The sound does something to your spirit, man. At once, all the graves, that was the revelation that was adumbrated in Ezekiel 37. People who have been maimed, Jews that were killed by Adolf Hitler, Bones that have been scattered. Matthias that were beheaded at once. That sound. That sound will do a quickening. The same way Christ was raised from the dead. The Holy Ghost will demonstrate his sovereignty at its best. To resurrect every man who is dead in Christ. Within a split second. And they will rise up with glorified bodies. Watch this. And that time, some of us who are alive, I pray that it happens during koinonia. While we are seated, maybe we are worshipping. All of a sudden, I will leave my Bible for you. My phone. 
Hallelujah. We will leave the drums, keyboard. There will still be a few people seated. And no wonder what is happening. Those who laugh at us right now. And laugh at our fanatism for the kingdom. And think that life is all about money. And cars. And houses. Huh? And marriage. And will not give priority to spiritual things. I am not telling you a fairy tale. We are closer to the coming of Christ right now than before Koinonia started. And it's a very good news. If it's a bad news for you, you are the natural man. It is not supposed to be a bad news. When people die, we write transition. It's a transition. So we who are alive, all of a sudden, this body that is limited, suddenly immortality is perfected upon this body we will no longer carry this material the clothes that we wear will no longer be removed there will be robes they are called garments of praise they are garments in the spirit and we will join the king of kings his feet is not going to touch the earth he will stand in, he will come with his own cloud his own realm. Mm. And all of a sudden, you will see your grandfather. You will see all the missionaries that were wounded in Nigeria. The ones who were killed in Calabar. The ones that were killed in different crises. We see all kinds of things. And together we will arise. And for the first time, you will look at the earth from heaven's perspective. And truly see that it is shadow. Every time we're on the air, I have the privilege to look down and you see houses like, you know how children make toys. Whereas somebody will say, I must build this thing. If not, I won't trust you. From heaven's perspective, people steal so that they can build that little object. And you see people moving like ants. That is from, from a view in the sky. Imagine how God looks at everyone. And he says, if I don't build this house, oh Lord, you wait. And he's saying, are you not wise? Have you not heard that there are mansions in heaven? It was not a prophetic statement. There are real mansions. There are people who have gone there. There are mansions. There are mansions. We will be caught up. We will leave all the countries. They will elect themselves. They will fight themselves. There will be a lot of vacancy. ABU Senate. No more admission. Some of your lecturers will come for lecture that morning. Only to find out that CNN. Will carry the most shocking news. Ever seen in human history. This day. Will put it new Nigeria, punch this nation, massive disappearance of people. All of a sudden, it will occur to those you preach to who laughed at you that this, this person said this. By the time they are saying it, we will wave this earth goodbye. I look forward to that time, it's a very good experience. Do you know what it means? That you are relieved from this body of sorrow. No thinking about all of these kinds of things. It's making some of you afraid. Because preachers have run away from it. Because they are not sure they are going to heaven. Don't talk about it. We are already going. We must talk about it. You talk about your house. You are hoping for break or strike or something so that you will run home. This world is not my home. Remember that country music. Powerful songs. Right now we dodge them. We sing all kinds of songs. I must make it. 
God is holding my hand and I must make it. These are the kinds of songs we write. Nothing at all that reminds us that we are leaving this realm. This is already a message. For someone, this is your, this is your word from the Lord tonight. That you should sit down and think about your life. I can stand as a preacher and deceive men. But on that day, all of a sudden you will see bishops and pastors still in the earth. And the members will say, Pastor, you say, please don't. The Bible will once again become the bestseller. Because everybody, whether you believe in Christ or not, it will no longer be an instrument of devotion. It will be the roadmap for the next level of prophecy. Every church on earth will be jam-packed. At that point, every business will close their shop by force. When there is nobody you must, whether you are selling tire, whether you are an iron bender, whatever you are doing, you will pack up your business and run to church. And everybody will sit in church hoping that that is the place where the rapture will happen, whereas it has happened. All of a sudden, within 24 hours, a strange man will appear on your TV. And you say, world, calm down. It's true that some people have gone, but let there be peace. And the Bible calls him the Antichrist. Not an Antichrist. He is the Antichrist. At that point, the Bible says, men will run and beg the mountain to fall on them. You are afraid of bicycle hitting your leg. But the Bible says even death will run away. Death will say, I've tried. That's it. Mission accomplished. Yes, read your Bible. Men will run to the mountain. People will carry knives to kill themselves and will not die. The Bible says the, in Revelation, I thought we'll be able to do it this year, but we may do it. We may not be able to do it this year. Eschatology, there is a whole teaching on it. A four-part series on the end time. Hallelujah. I'm just giving you, am I boring you? <laughs> you better say no because this cannot be boring when your eternal destiny is tied to it. Some of us, this is a revelation. God has been talking to you. Calm down with the issue of wanting to make it and think about your eternal destiny. Hallelujah. Churches will still be full. There will still be men of God doing live telecasts, whereas the rapture has happened. Some will even be making altar calls. I mean what I'm saying, and I'm very serious about it. Yet there are some people, some quiet mothers, who have been praying, like Anna, the prophetess, looking forward to the consolation. When that happens... Some of the cleaners in our churches who we have disrespected. Before you know it, they will leave the rag for you there and leave. Some of the house helps we have ill-treated, they will go and leave all of us. The door of CBN will be wide open to go and pack all the money. All the security people, the banks will be there. The bulk room will be open. Go and pack. And then you will hear that there is a new technology for buying and selling the Antichrist will introduce a new code of conduct. Joshua Selman! For where? He has gone. And I will turn there and I'll see Lawrence. I'll say, You made it. Oh, I pray that you will turn and see your father, your mother, and you say, Where is my sister? And there will be joy, no matter how antisocial you are. There must be joy. Because you will turn and see someone and you will suddenly turn and see the person who led you to Christ but has died. And you will look at him. And we will all be young. No competition of I'm fine, you are not. We will all be fine. Leave this body with all the deficiencies that this realm brought for us. And we will arise in a glorified body. Question. Will your father be there? Will your mother be there? Yes, you may be there. There are people in my life, I'm sorry to say it, I know they will not be there. Based on the truth of God's word, they died without Jesus Christ. 
Some of them, we had the privilege to talk to them. And they didn't take it seriously. And they died. There are people you spoke to. They didn't know that you were so close. And they didn't listen. And they died. With my mouth will I make it known. That's why we have to preach. From the rising of the sun. Right until it's going down. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. There will be churches that more than half of the congregation will be dancing and singing praise and worship. And they are not gone. Because they never took seriously the issue of salvation. They thought it's a basic thing. There will even be men of God sharing revelations. And all of a sudden they will find out that the earth looks empty. The weight of the earth will reduce because people have left. Revelation says that there was 30 minute silence in heaven. You know why? The, the shock in heaven because of the seven vials that was about to be poured upon the earth. The Bible says one third of the vegetation of the earth will be destroyed. You were taught about ecosystems, right, in biology. Imagine what happens to the earth when one third of the vegetation is destroyed. It's not a prophetic statement. It will happen. No buying indomie. Until the mark of the beast is there. No nothing. No matter how you hide. We have GPS. What do they call it? GPRS. GPS. They will find you. No hiding. The question I want to ask you right now. Again. Is. Are you going to make it? This is not to scare you. What then is the condition to make heaven? What condition transits you from being a sinner to being a righteous person in Christ? Romans chapter 8. Sorry, chapter 10. I'll begin to read from verse 8. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Here's the condition. That if thou shalt what? Confess. Not assume, confess, verbalize with your mouth the lordship of Jesus Christ. And if you believe it, that means it is possible to confess what you do not believe. Is that true? So, you must first believe in your heart that this is true. Jesus came and died. He shed his blood for my sins. He was given as a propitiation, as an exchange. What I could not do for myself. Jesus came as the ransom. The lamb that shed his blood for my sins. He said if you believe in the Lord Jesus. And thou shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead. What is the, the result? Thou shalt be saved. Next verse. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And then with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. Has this happened to you? I know you have spoken. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe you died. I believe